was funny about it. Just hit, like it was Heather and them just going back yeah, and forth. They're, and they're funny. Watching her smack the candy bar out of Shilton's hand was a highlight. Like, yeah, you could tell like that's that's like the <clears throat> brother sister mentality. Like, so we keep getting um, we got a, a pile of emails and we haven't been reading them, and we're to the point where we really have too many of them to ever read. I print them out, you know, emails for Lance to read, and um, we got a lot of dudes saying that, you know, we've inspired them to start another business, take a second job, work out, go to the, go to the gym at all, um, better their health, whatever, whatever it is. And I get a lot of them and I don't, I don't know, like I take them with a grain of salt. Like I don't know if they're really serious. Obviously some of them are, but they're like, what's the, I want to start a business and provide for my family and be able to have things and do things. How did you do it? And there's not really one answer to that. Like I don't have a plan. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I guess if, if I told you what I did, you could improvise a plan, but it kind of, it kind of hit home last night when, uh, I was at the shop. Colin was there till when were you there? 9 30, 10 o'clock. I was there till about 11 mm -hmm. and, uh, Colin was in the back shipping boxes. I was out front cutting belts. And I just turned on Survival Podcast and just picked one that sounded like something I might want to live. We listened to one of the call-in, caller, you know, question and answers from five, six days ago. And Spearco, the Survival Podcast, Jack Spearco, um, check them out if you don't know who they are. They're on Facebook, uh, thesurvivalpodcast.com. They're on uh, iTunes. Awesome show. There's literally 1,500 of them almost now. Anything preparedness, survival-minded you want to listen to, it's there. If there's something that doesn't interest you, just go to the next one because there'll be something in there somewhere that has your interest. But uh, <clears throat> people ask him that all the time too. And I don't remember what the guy asked, but Jack said, you know, business people that are successful weren't so worried about business. They just went and did business, and when they made mistakes they corrected them as they went they weren't so worried about finding the mistakes before they happened and you see that a lot especially in mainstream business classes 101 102 um, you know there, you always hear small business association SBA we could never fucking get an SBA loan especially when we were started starting out like these dudes spend four or five years doing a fucking business plan and and working these numbers and all this fucking what if shit that they never did any business and then they go around and try to get a business loan and so many businesses fail because the dudes get that start the businesses never ran any businesses and they they asked you know i remember jack saying before he's like you know how did you run such a successful business he said well we only talk about the the successes you don't hear all the failures we had and all the shit that didn't work and while yes you know we're doing well I moved to, you know, I'm, we were big in San Diego for, for a long time when we had the shop running in Oceanside. You know, we had 30 employees and, uh, you know, we were doing well and I shut down to move here just to work with three employees and I wasn't going to do it big and I wasn't going to have fucking fast cars and big homes. I lived here to kind of live off the land and just exist and, you know, dudes started crawling out of the woodwork to talk shit and it motivated me to grow again and that's why we're here my biggest motivation are dudes telling me that I can't or telling me I'll go out of business that's why you've seen us do so much in the last 24 months as opposed to the fucking 36 before that because I didn't care I didn't want to do big business and they motivated me to do it again and now you're kind of in this trap where you have to keep doing it I have people relying on me and I mean, we want to do it, obviously. I enjoy the, the stuff and, you know, being able to do things with the employees and, you know, the family and stuff, the family of the business. But we're going to run right into this fucking retard going five miles an hour on the highway. I can see that old white hair yeah, right there. Yeah, gray hair. Unfortunately, she probably shouldn't be driving. Yeah. Um, but what, he did, what they said, and, and that was the main thing. Do something. It doesn't really matter what you do. If you know it's wrong, don't do it, obviously. But when faced with a when faced 
with an option to act or not act, it's always better to act. Like, it just, it just is. It might be wrong, but at least you tried. Unless you're told specifically this won't work or whatever. Obviously, you know, if your boss is telling you, hey, we have to do something, do something. It might not be the right thing, but at least you tried. And that's kind of where I was where I was going with this was you know we get all these dudes that email me how do I do this how do I do that how do I do this we try to answer them and we will answer them but do something like everybody has that friend I've got a buddy and every year he he, he texts me or emails me you know every couple months hey I'm getting back in the gym I'm gonna do this I've been hearing that for 10 years you've been getting back in the gym and you're not getting back in the gym. You attempt to go and you, you do it a little bit. Or I'm going to start this or I'm going to do this. But you don't do any of it. It's been 10 years and you don't have those things. You don't do those things. You don't improve yourself. You have talked about it for 10 years. Whereas had you split, you know spent 10 minutes a day just jogging around the block. Just 10 minutes. All that would have accumulated and today you would be better for it than you were 10 years ago when you started talking about it. And I get it, you don't have the motivation or whatever. You're overweight, you go to the gym, you hurt, you're fat, you're embarrassed, whatever it is, but we've been talking about it for 10 years now, and had you just spent 10 minutes doing it every day, just let's say push-ups, you can't do any push-ups, try to do a push-up every day. Every day, try to do two push-ups, and when you can do two, work on three. I know you want to do 100 push-ups, but you can't do it. I can't do it. I don't have the desire to do 100 push-ups. If I wanted to, though, I would start with one push-up. And that's how business is. Do something, no matter what it is. Don't worry. Don't, don't spend all your time trying to learn business. Go fucking make something, create something, sell it. Whatever that is. And you might start with ABC and it might change into XYZ the next day. You might be in a totally different business, but the aspects of business are still the same. Whether it's wh whatever it is. You know, people, business is giving somebody something for something. And you gotta figure out what it is you want to do, what would make you happy producing and providing to somebody else that they would be willing to give you money for. Enough money to do whatever it is you wanna do because that's what business is about. What is it you really want? And that's the deal. I mean, you guys will have a bunch of comments and stuff. I just that makes me think of my football coach in high school. I uh, obviously like I'm not overly large myself, and a couple of the other land uh, land linebackers. We were all like kind of like I was the shortest, obviously, but we were all medium height people. Very not overly huge but neither was our coach and coach Moat was he had went all state was an all-american football player from a really small school went and played in college ball and stuff like that which is huge coming from a small school right and he said whatever you do he said do it full speed he's like if you're gonna mess up if you're gonna miss a tackle miss a tackle as hard as piss like you you should dive so hard that you're ready to knock that person in half that you hit the ground and it hurts you he said, because sooner or later, like, your effort's going to contact where it's supposed to, and then it's going to make a whole lot more sense, and then you'll do it again, and then again, and then again, because you're going to you're gonna fall down. Good and bad things are going to happen. That's what he used to say. Good and bad things are going to happen, but just your decision as to how much effort went into each. But that's kind of on the track what you're talking about. Like, you just, you just have to do it. And as soon as that good thing happens, they're going to quit talking about the bad things and talk about the good things. Until you do one that's bad, then they'll, that'll be the focus. But do something. Whatever whatever the fuck that is, whatever you're writing me, telling me we motivated, and you're asking me questions, do something. Even if it's not as much as yesterday, you still got up and did something. And that, that's the biggest thing. Because you'll learn from it. You'll, you'll create habits. You're, you know cut it off we're pulling up here